Hey guys, I uh, wanted to do an in process video on the latest LS241 cylinder head I'm porting, or heads, there's going to be two of them naturally, but um, it's probably one of the most common castings that I see people wanting to do port work on. I believe the 241s must be more common than the 243s and seems like everybody's got a set <laughs> i don't know where they get all these things from but i mean as far as porting the porting standpoint of it it doesn't really matter you know if you bring in i mean i don't really like the 706 casting cylinder heads because they have a, a bad issue with being cracked sometimes but an 862 head to me is an excellent head to port because an 862 has the small combustion chamber and will be a whatever size you know intake runner and exhaust runner I choose it to be when I get done working on it. So you know 862 heads you can pick up for next to nothing. I can put a port job on them and turn them into you know 220 intake runner 83 C you know 83 cc exhaust flowing 290 CFM on the intake and 215 or whatever on the exhaust. So, you know, the head casting doesn't matter to me as long as it's not cracked or real porous or I hate super dirty heads because it just gives me more work to try to get them cleaned up. I think I'm going to start requiring people to clean their own castings, even if they're assembled. I want them to be cleaned before they bring them to me because it just adds a lot of time and effort for me to try to clean these cylinder heads that have been in service for a long time and not get paid for it. So, But anyway, these heads right here were not dirty. That's not a problem as far as that's concerned. Uh, I was just getting off on a rant complaining about dirty cylinder heads because Porting and working on dirty cylinder heads is just a pain in the neck that nobody enjoys. So I wanted to show you a little bit of the method to my madness that I use. Basically what I've adapted is I will find my math and you guys can look. I'm not real good at doing the adding links to my other videos, but I'm going to have to start doing that to help you guys get previous information clarified through the older videos <clears throat> but basically what i do is on the intake bowl i try to get it between 89 not more than 90 percent so what that'll be is if you take this is a 241 head that already has the seats and the valves for the two inch intake 155 exhaust so what i'll do is i will make a template what we do is we take old valves, chuck them up in a drill press, and then use a sanding, um, it's not even a grinding disc, it's like one of them sign, uh, grind, I'm sorry, it's not even a grinding disc, it's like a sanding wheel that goes on the die grinder, and we will turn the drill press on and then run the sander to reduce these things down to the size we want. So it gives you a really good round uh, template to put into your porch to see where you're at on your bowl cut. So remember what we talked about, or I have talked about previously in videos, intake bowls, I like to get between 89, 89 to 90%. So you would take two inch times 0.88 or 0.89, whatever you choose to try to go for. You could even go eight, seven. It's not going to kill you, but I, I just follow the Joe Mondello theory to uh, not exceed 90 percent for most applications so i look for around 89 to 90 here so that's what we did measured this out i think this is 1.7 1. 1. 750 or 1.770 i apologize i meant to write it on here with a magic marker i even have my magic marker but i forgot to do it so but what I do is I will do those bowl cuts to where I get my template 
to fit down in all my bowls. See, that one's a little tight. Look at this one. Goes right in. Goes right in. This one's a little tight, but that will clean itself up when I get the, you know, because I haven't, I haven't finished the bottom, the blend. I've just done the bowl cut. And see, that's a little tight. I can feel where it's touching. So when I do my bowl blend, it'll take that bowl cut and blend it into the bowl. And then this thing will literally just fall through there. No problem. Same thing on the exhaust side. That's a 155 exhaust valve. So now on the exhaust side, you don't run as high of a percentage. Now keep that in mind. 88, 88 to, I say 88 to 89, I mean 88 to 90% on the intake bowl cut. But on your exhaust side, I try to go around 85 to 87%. I don't like to go over 87%, especially if it's going to be a boosted or turbo application because of excessive exhaust heat from back pressure. Because the last thing you want to do is do too big of a bowl cut on your exhaust seat and makes it, it can make it fall out of the head. I don't know if you guys have ever run into that or heard of that phenomena, but if you don't leave enough meat on your actual exhaust seat you can end up with a seat getting so hot that it can fall out of the head casting but these i think we went with a gosh i want to say it was like 86 percent because this is going to be a fairly high effort turbo ls engine i decided to just go conservative run that at a maximum 86 percent this is 86 percent but it won't quite fit. Like it's down below the, where the valve seats, but it's not going in like I want it to. So I have a little bit more room. I'm talking less than, I would say one to two thousandths around just certain parts of the uh, diameter. Cause uh, last night what I did was stick, I stuck a light in from behind, set the valve on there and I could look around the diameter of my template to find out how much more material I need to get off because I'm trying my best to not exceed 86% on my exhaust bowl cut because of that heat issue. But I mean, it's really close to going in. So I'm really pleased with that. I'm not worried about that. That's going to be a given once I get into doing that. But I want you guys to just see these 241 heads in process. I want to see if I could tilt this thing up a little bit. You guys can see some of the work I've done on the bowls. Let me see if I've got a, uh, here, I'll just use this light right here. Ugh. But you can see some of the rough cut I've done on these um, intake see the work I've done on the guides on the intakes that's just the rough cut I haven't finished it in any way but I'm just kind of showing you the process that I go through to start working those guides the, the exhaust guides I've done some work to but I needed to change to a, a different sized burr to finish the exhaust guide work but you can see where I'm headed Let's see if I can get the light out of the way dumb dumb but you can see where I'm headed with this work with getting the right percentage on my bowl cut, doing a good bowl blend, working the guides down to where they're the absolute least amount of flow restriction as we can get them, but still maintain good structural integrity for the gap valve guide itself. Um, I wanted to show you guys over here on the exhaust what I've been doing. Is raising the roof. Let me get this thing to lay down here. Now keep in mind this is still just in the rough cut stage where I was using my my large fluted single cut aluminum burr but if you'll notice what I'm doing is and I do have a set of exhaust gaskets to put on here and scribe one more time but you can actually see on these cylinder heads where the factory gasket seals you know what i mean there's a witness mark 
on this cylinder head where the factory gasket seals. So what I do, and everyone should know, I hope most of you know, but I will say, you don't gain anything by lowering the floor. You know what I mean? You don't help yourself by lowering the floor. So like a, a less experienced cylinder head porter, they would say, they would put their exhaust gasket on here and be like, oh, I could lower the floor of this thing almost a quarter of an inch. You do that, you're gonna, number one, you're probably gonna poke into water. There's a water jacket behind there. But you don't gain anything in flow because all you've done is make a cross-sectional area increase where it's not needed. Now keep in mind, cylinder head, or I'm sorry, exhaust gas, when it comes out of your cylinder, it's smoking hot, especially in a turbo application. That hot air, hot gas rather, is gonna follow the roof of the port. You know what I mean? Hot air rises, cold air is lower. The hotter that gas is, the higher in the port it's gonna be. So area in your cross-sectional area, Increasing your flow at the top of the port is going to be far more beneficial and not detrimental to your end flow result. So what I do, just as a rough cut, is I will look where that factory gasket was left its witness mark, and about half to three quarters of the way down towards the floor, I will open it up to the factory gasket. I hope you guys can kind of follow along what I'm saying. Like, you know, you could almost say it was like a pseudo D-shaped because it's still going to have that flat floor. And then I'm going to open it up to the gasket on the top two-thirds of the port. And it's a little bit rough right now because, like I said, I was just using that really strong uh, single-cut burr. But I wanted you guys to kind of see how that process was going and see uh, how I start that. On the intake side, I'm basically just doing the gasket matching. And keep in mind, it's still just in the rough cut stage where I dike them the intake ports, put the uh, Felpro problem solver gaskets on there, and scribe those gaskets specifically to the cylinder head. So what I'll do is I'll rough cut, rough to medium cut, out to the gasket line, then I will literally take and flatten like all these walls, these side walls. You want to work them all the way in and blend them into your, into your port as far as you can reach and make them as flat as you can. You know what I'm saying? You're going to increase that cross-sectional area slightly and you're going to gain actual flow by introducing a larger opening but blending that all the way into the port not just funnel shaping it where you got a bigger opening right at the gasket and then it necks down to a, a slower uh, airflow which in some instances can help create a little bit of velocity but in more times than not naturally aspirated and for sure boosted applications you want to try to get those walls as flat as you can and get these things to get the air in and out of there as fast as it can. Uh, everyone should know you never, never, never make a port bigger only for the sake of making it bigger. You know what I mean? So I'm working from experience. You can look at other cylinder head porters either on YouTube or online. Follow, they're going to follow along the same process and logic that I use for porting cylinder heads. So just feel free to look into that information. And make sure you guys know what you're doing. If you're going to port a set of heads, you don't have to go max port. Just take your time. Follow the steps and the guidelines. And don't get in a hurry. The first thing you have to remember is take your time. If you get tired, if you get frustrated, if it pisses you off, put the tool down and walk away. Because you can mess up a head quicker than you would imagine. So I appreciate you guys watching these videos. I'll try to get some more information posted up on these cylinder heads as I get them done. And as always, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, and hit that little bell.